and welcome to this new video on my DIY remote control project. What you are seeing here is the iteration 2 of my console, which is introducing a lot of new things. But before to dive in into this news, uh, I would kindly ask you to subscribe to the channel and to give a thumbs up to the video if you like it, of course, and to hit the bell to stay tuned. Also, this video has been sponsored by PCBWay. All the PCB that you see here uh, has been in fact produced by them and also assembled by them uh, and this is the last uh, one arrived uh, and I have to say that um, the process of ordering uh, the PCB manufacturing as well as all the activities leading to the assembly phase works in a very smooth way and for the assembly part uh, I've been really as, as always uh, helped by the PCB way guys which is uh, really nice and really useful during that phase. So thanks a lot to PCBWay. So why a new iteration of the uh, console? This console is smaller, is lighter, and especially simpler respect to the other one. Simpler from a circuitry perspective, as well as from a device perspective. So as you can see in terms of display, I'm relying only in the channel display, the small channel display, and I don't have any more the big display in the back. Why this? Uh, in order to reduce cost uh, and in order to reduce complexity in terms of assembly and uh, in terms of uh, maintenance. All of this in the perspective of uh, uh, starting a production of the product. On top of this, as I was saying, it is smaller, it is lighter, uh, uh, so I mean it's more usable uh, in, a, in an environment. Of course, what you are seeing here is a kind of nude version of the uh, chassis. The chassis needs to be finished. Uh, but anyway, I mean, uh, the dimension is around 20% less respect to the, uh, to the first iteration of the assembly. What's new in particular on the new main board, which is now version uh, 4.1? As you can see, I have implemented the membrane rubber button. I made a video on how to produce footprints for these buttons. These are the guys. Membrane buttons are uh, really cheap, uh, um, very easy to uh, use and assemble, uh, and in my opinion, more uh, uh, um, reliable uh, on the long term respect to the mechanical ones. Uh, however, uh, not everything comes easy. Uh, in fact, I was expecting that with this new solution that the bounce, the bouncing issue uh, was going to be reduced. Uh, and in fact, it was uh, the opposite. Uh, these uh, buttons, this rubber button, introduced actually a higher uh, um, rate of bouncing, at least in my implementation, respect to the mechanical ones. Uh, so in order to have them working, I had to work a little bit, research a little bit on the software side. This is always my preferred part when I have this kind of problem. If I can avoid to touch the hardware for me is better because I mean, of course, uh, touching the hardware means uh, time, money uh, and so on and so forth. Where touching the software is much faster and easier. And in fact, I managed to resolve the problem just touching the software, just a little bit of close up on the uh, footprint of the buttons in which as you can see I've also managed to put uh, an LED you will see it in a moment uh, for the button that needs to have uh, to be enlightened uh, so let's make an example on what is bouncing effect on this kind of buttons so all these buttons have been uh, filtered with the software solution that I found but one which I left uh, in the or say in the original uh, implementation, the simple implementation which I will show you in a moment, which is this one. Okay, so how was uh, this uh, this button implemented originally? This is the original implementation. This is uh, capturing on the main loop the clicking uh, uh, action uh, event, and this is capturing the click out event. In order to prevent uh, the bouncing phenomenon, which uh, is anyway present even in the, in the mechanical button, usually I put a delay, as you can see here. This is a, a small pause. This value originally was 2-3 milliseconds. With this solution, I managed to debounce correctly all the mechanical buttons. As I was saying, 
when I introduced the uh, rubber ones, uh, that was not enough. So I add uh, uh, this phenomenon even with the uh, pause, uh, with the delay here. Why a delay? Well, simply because if when it's entered the first clicking event, you pause for two, three milliseconds, every other false uh, uh, signal on the uh, on the um, microcontroller will be normally skipped because in this moment, uh, for three milliseconds, the main loop is uh, paused, is not moving. Okay, and this filters out uh, uh, reliably uh, uh, the, the problem, uh, the problem of the bounce, but not on the rubber pad. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Uh, so this is MIDI OX. Uh, this is a MIDI terminal, and we're going to see the message sent by the console to the PC via USB. If I click on the button, what I'm expecting is that uh, there is a click in. Uh, uh, event or a click in and click out, it depends on what I need, and just one action per event. So, for instance, if I need to send an a MIDI message, I need to send a message, one message on the click in and one message on the click out, and no more than this. This is the bouncing effect that I was mentioning before. As you can see, when I click on the button, for most of the time, Instead of just sending one message, the system is sending several messages. Why? Because the microcontroller is receiving several signals of in and out. One is real and it's my touch. The other are false uh, signal and this is, in fact, the bouncing mechanism. If I go clicking another button, which is in fact filtered with the uh, solution, for instance this one, as you can see, I click and only a message is sent. Just one, no more than one. So how I have resolved the problem? There you have the solution. First of all, uh, uh, the delay in the main loop can create uh, a, a collateral effect. When I was working on the rubber button, the first thing that I did in order to resolve was to increase uh, the uh, delay. I try it first with 5 milliseconds and then 10 milliseconds and then 15 milliseconds. Uh, and I mean, things were improving but were not resolving the issue. And on top of this, uh, I was starting having a, a very uh, bad effect on all the uh, data entering into the console via UART or via USB. Why this? Simply because uh, when you are pausing, you are pausing and the, the main loop is in pause and the uh, microcontroller is in pause. So if something's arrived through the USB bus or the UART bus or whatever asynchronous bus, uh, uh, you lose data or in, in total or partially. It depends on when this happens. Uh, and with 10, 15 milliseconds uh, pause, uh, I've started really seeing this problem. And on top of this, the, the, the bouncing issue was not even resolved. So, in order to resolve the problem, I have eliminated the pause. I have created a 32 bit variable millicounter. Millicounter is increased every milliseconds by uh, a timer inside the microcontroller. And then I created a 32-bit variable for each button. So when the first click happened, uh, uh, the system, and, and so you enter into this uh, event, the system checks if the uh, button variable is zero, in which case it knows that this is the first time it is clicked, or if millicounter is higher than the variable of the button plus the, the delay, which is now set to 30 milliseconds, which is the uh, right number that I need uh, uh, to have the things working well. If one of these two conditions is true, it enters here, and the first thing is set setting the uh, button variable at the value of millicounter. Okay? In this moment, the two variables are equalized, but millicounter is keep on going every millisecond. So there is a period uh, between uh, 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 the millisecond here uh, value and the value plus of the variable plus the delay 
in which the system will not enter because in fact millisecond will be lower smaller than the sum of the button variable and the delay that i set here so for 30 milliseconds you will still have bouncing phenomenon entering here but this will be skipped because this condition will be false and then when the condition is true it sent the message which will be sent just once uh, and so on uh, uh, with this solution in fact i managed to resolve entirely the problem uh, as i show you before now the system is working very well even uh, clicking on button that uh, have both click in and click out events such as this one for instance as you can see you always have one event per click click in and click out and uh, the thing is really working in a smooth way uh, uh, that's it for this uh, video I will be going on making a second video in which I will fully connect and fully test uh, uh, the console together with you uh, in order to close this iteration and then uh, I will move on uh, redesigning the cover here of the uh, of the chassis and also the inclination of the chassis because now for uh, to make it easy easier the chassis is straight is not anymore uh, inclined uh, that's it thank you very much for your attention and once again a big thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video Cheers!